Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer behind the YouTube channel Nonconformist Conscience and also the webpage Nonconformist Conscience. This is a week that is in the post-shadow period of the full moon that just happened in the sign of Capricorn, where we were really culminating dynamics of how we've structured our reality prior to. And this week, we are in a readjustment, realigning, and re rebalancing phase, which was really reflected by the astrology of this week. So we are in this window of opportunity that is two weeks until the new moon happening in the sign of cancer. And whenever the new moon comes up, I will go over exactly what the astrology is reflecting at that point in time. But I think that it's really important for us to keep in mind that not only are we having a new moon in Cancer on the 17th, but just after this new moon occurs, the nodes are going to shift into the signs of Libra, South Node, and Aries, North Node. The nodes have been in Scorpio and Taurus for the past 18 months. And as we are restructuring our reality and Pluto is doing this dance back and forth between Capricorn and the sign of Aquarius, well, we are getting to apply what we've been learning about our relationship with self that has been reflected in the North Node and the sign of Taurus being ruled by Venus as this occurs in this two week period, we are really culminating these Capricornian dynamics and applying the information that we have been learning in regard to our relationship to ourselves, to our own values, to what we need as a way to create stability within, as a form of radical self love and a transformation of our relationship to ourselves. But on the 17th, when the notes shift, the North Node ruler has been Venus for the past 18 months. When this nodal shift takes place on the 17th, the South Node ruler is now going to be Venus. So now we are going to get to apply all of these dynamics to our relationships as a way to create more balance and harmony within our everyday life, within our relationships with others. So it's a really interesting time. We're in this two-week period that is really about the culmination of one dynamic so we can enter into a new cycle. Um, that is not only this new moon that's going to be occurring on the 17th, but also this nodal shift. So I wanted to speak on that just a little bit and for all of us to keep that in mind as I go over this astrology. So this week, we have quite a few conversations happening that speak to a readjustment and a realignment. And these conversations are called in conjuncts. And I will go into each one of these that's happening this week. But also, I want us to keep in mind that Mars is going to go into the sign of Virgo, which is also about uh, refinement and self-improvement. So let me really dive into this week for you guys. So this week we have Ceres, the asteroid, is going to be in an in conjunct with Saturn in the sign of Pisces. Ceres is this asteroid where we can experience loss, but where we can also regain that which we lost. It harkens back to the story of Ceres and Persephone and Persephone, Ceres' daughter, being taken into the underworld by Pluto and Ceres being extremely upset and searching for her daughter. And then finally, um, you know, Persephone gets to hang out throughout the spring and the summer. And that is where Ceres regains this relationship with her daughter until she has to go back to the underworld. It also harkens to the seasons of, you know, uh, when we get to plant seeds and whenever things get to grow and blossom. That's whenever Persephone, you know, came from the underworld back to the surface. And then also 
it's the cycle of birth, death, and regeneration, um, and the loss and regainment of something through a metamorphosis. So Ceres in the sign of Libra can really speak to where we might have lost whom we were in in regard to our relationships. It can be where we have adopted the values and the needs of other people and abandon ourselves. But this can also be where we have lost balance and harmony within our relationships and within our relationship to ourself and the need to regain that or to come back into balance and harmony by understanding whom we are in a very natural level. And so with Ceres in conjunct to Saturn, the in conjunct denotes a refinement or rebalancing and a realignment with what one's values are. Saturn in the sign of Pisces is looking at our structural reality. It's also the ruler of Pluto right now in the sign of Capricorn. And so we're looking at how our conditioning stemming from man-made laws and constructs, Saturn and Pisces, has affected our relational dynamics what values and needs have you have adopted of others that really aren't in resonance with whom you are? And so for some, external events can be triggered this week for them to have this readjustment period, to come into an awareness of what they might have lost within relationships. Ceres and the sign of Libra is also looking at codependency and enmeshment dynamics for some. So that's also where one can abandon themselves in relationships because they're wanting to do for the other. But what is so beautiful about Saturn and Pisces being in conjunct to Sirius and Libra is through this refinement and self-reflection, Saturn, we can understand what are more timeless and universal values, needs, and principles as opposed to man-made structures or constructs that have affected us in our relationships. And so there can be this need to really reflect and to have discernment around what it means to be able to be whole and balanced within a relationship without adopting others' values or needs. This is also on a collective level, looking at how man-made structures and constructs have created imbalances within the ways that we do relationship with groups of people and also with the earth, seeing as the North Node is still in Taurus and the North Node and Ceres are both ruled by a Venus in the sign of Leo. So there's this need to really analyze and have discernment around our relationships with others and our relationship with the land. And through this reflecting on these dynamics, we can come back into balance and harmony through dissolving these old structures that really are not in resonance with whom we are on a very natural level. This can also be this readjustment and realignment as to not giving ultimate meaning outside of ourselves. Uh, oftentimes, people don't talk about the spiritual relationship that we have with source. And seeing as Saturn is in Pisces and there's a set of culmination that's wanting to happen of how we've structured our reality, how our consciousness has been structured through man-made constructs, there's this need to create balance and harmony and to regain that through cultivating a more harmonious relationship with source, with spirit, with Gaia, and with the natural mother series. So within the archetype of series, we can see in someone's natal chart sometimes that series can really speak to where there's been loss and abandonment with mothers or where a mom hasn't been the best mom, especially seeing as Ceres is in Libra, 
maybe some of us have had mothers who have projected their needs onto us instead of looking at who we are on an intrinsic and sovereign level. And now we're seeing how this is playing out in our lives as adults, how it's trickled from childhood or early development now into adulthood and how that has impacted our relationships and where maybe we have learn to pour from an empty cup instead of being able to meet our own needs. We're getting value in meeting other people's needs. And so if this is you, this there can be external events triggered this week as a way to realign and readjust and to create more balance and harmony for a small few. This can be where crisis within relational dynamics gets brought to the surface as a way to culminate the dynamics that happen during the Capricorn full moon. And so we're looking at what is our understanding of emotional security. And for some, this can feel like the rug is getting pulled out from underneath them. And it does, it serves, it doesn't feel so great, but it does serve the purpose to create a rebalancing effect for us to understand where we might be giving ultimate meaning outside of ourselves, our relationships with others, our work relationships. It's Libra. So it's not just our romantic interpersonal relationships. But this is a conversation that really can help us come into an awareness about where imbalances have been created, where that stems from our conditioning, and a, it can create a laser-like focus for us to understand the why of it all and where it initially happened in our early childhood development. So... On the 6th, which is today, Neptune is going to in conjunct Mars. Neptune is in the sign of Pisces. It's the ruler of that Saturn. And it is in conjunct Mars in the sign of Leo. And Mars is ruled by the sun in the sign of Cancer. So this can really speak to where we need to create a self-refinement and self-improvement in our own spiritual practices as a way to creatively actualize and as a way to create a healthier understanding of our emotional dynamics and our emotional security. This is where we can really get in touch where we have bought into illusions regarding how it is we're supposed to go out into the world and creatively actualize. This is, you know, one of those conversations where we can feel like we don't have self-leadership because of fear of failure. And with the in conjunct to Neptune, there's a need to surrender to the fact that we're not going to be perfect, that the value is in the effort and that we can't control an outcome, but we can use Mars energy and Leo to gain a warrior-like spirit, uh, a warrior-like spirit to really go after and cultivate and self-actualize through understanding our emotional dynamics. But this is something, this is a conversation where You've got to dive into the emotional body to do just that. And the creative expression comes through understanding our emotional dynamics on a very deep level. This is a week, especially after this whole Capricorn full moon, that we can be having aha moments or divine guidance, seeing as Saturn and Pisces and Neptune and Pisces are a big part of this conversation this week, where we can have divine understanding or divine guidance or feel like we have angels you know helping us to understand where and why we've experienced the emotional dynamics that we have leading up to this point and through that awareness we can cultivate better inner security and better emotional security that helps perpetuate 
inner emotional validation and healthy self-esteem. This is also, there's a lot going on this week between Mars and some of the other planets that I'll further go into that really can speak to those of us who are wanting to do something out in the collective. And maybe we're feeling scared because it's different or it is a on a more spiritual level. And so it might feel like it would be alienating to other people or for others, this can be where there's a lot of creative juice flowing and we're wanting to self-actualize, but there's a fear that it just won't be accepted or maybe we don't know how to go about doing that. And this week helps us get in touch with the root cause of these emotional dynamics so that way we can go out into the world and put whatever it is out there in a beneficial and a relevant way that helps the whole, that helps the tribe. Where we really feel like we're making an impact by co-creating not only with our society or our community, but also with spirit because we feel like we are having divine guidance on how to creatively actualize through that that function as a as a way to help be of service to the whole and to others. And for others, this can just be being a mirror to those around you as a way to to do it. We all need representation, not all, but the majority of us. And to know that something can be done. And so this is a week where some of us are really understanding that we have a specific purpose and a specific function at this point in time as a way to help cultivate better values that are more in alignment with natural law and universal and timeless principles this week because we're wanting to build a foundation on that as a way to serve the whole, the community the collective right now and so there can be a lot flowing right now but whenever you're doing this work to be of service to the whole you have to be able to integrate the personal lessons and the wisdom so this is a week where we could be gaining a lot of wisdom through understanding our own emotional dyna dynamics as a way to bring forth a creative spark within as a way to help others later on down the road. And this all serves as a readjustment, realignment, and a rebalancing function right now. On the 8th, Lilith in the sign of Virgo is going to trine Uranus in the sign of Taurus. This is the second time that Lilith and Uranus have met in conversation and perfection within the last week. And Lilith in the sign of Virgo is really about creating habits, it's Virgo, that help us to sustain the long haul. Lilith here is, let me start with Lilith. Lilith is where our root and our center of our soul is. And we're looking at this on a collective level. It would be interesting for you guys to see where Lilith falls in your own natal chart. She is going to be at 21 and 22 degrees Virgo and to see if she's aspecting anything in your own natal chart at this point in time. But on a collective level, we're wanting to return back to our collective center that is in alignment with natural law and universal and timeless principles. And Lilith in the sign of Virgo speaks to doing the work and taking the steps that are necessary in order for this to take shape and fruition. Lilith is also really about the undistorted masculine and feminine that resides in all of us. And with the sign of Virgo, there can be analysis paralysis. There can be this fear of doing something out of shame or judgment or the fear of failure because of perfectionism. And the beautiful thing about this is with this trine happening from uh, Lilith in the sign of Virgo to Uranus and Taurus is that this brings objectivity to the inner emotional dynamics revolving around our relationship to ourselves. So that way we can continue to liberate from the dynamics that really keep us from doing what it is that we're supposed to be doing in life. 
It also brings objectivity to what types of habits are you needing to create on the daily, the day to day, in order to create a more sound foundation, especially we're thinking about how this is the post shadow of that full moon and Capricorn and wanting to culminate old structures in order for new structures to take shape and take place. So that way we can stand on them for the long haul. So Lilith here in the sign of Virgo is also about purging and purification of old values, old needs that have affected our relationship to ourself. And this conversation brings the objectivity and the discernment that is necessary if we want, if we choose to consciously utilize this energy. And this helps us return back to center. This is also a conversation that speaks to needing to make an action, to put one foot in front of the other. We can't just think about the healthy habits that we need to be creating that help to cultivate a stronger relationship to self and that help cultivate a um, healthier self-esteem and a grounding from the inside out. This is really about not just thinking about it, but putting one foot in front of the other to take the necessary steps. And through that, we get to learn from our mistakes, which can be really hard for people who are very perfectionistic. And so there's a lesson in simplification through the Taurus and Uranus dynamic, and also grounding within one's own inner voice as to how to do this, but also liberating from the inner voice that says that you can't, because you can and to create objectivity around why you think that you can't. Where does that come from? Where is there a falsehood in your life that says that you can't do something or that you're not capable? Where do you have fear? Where do you have shame or judgment? And where has that affected you to where you need to liberate from it? And how do you cultivate healthier habits in the day-to-day -day that bring forth healthier self-esteem? that helps to transmute old energy and to create a radical alteration and transformation with your relationship to yourself. Lilith is going to do this dance with Uranus a few more times, giving us all an opportunity to continue to create these healthy habits that last the long haul. This is also about cultivation of a spiritual relationship and how that affects our inner dynamics, our relationship to ourself. It's about understanding what cosmological or philosophical viewpoint you feel like resonates with your values and is in alignment with your values and what you're coming to understand about what it is that you need at this point in time. It's refinement and self-improvement is the name of the game this week. And Lilith trining Uranus in the sign of Taurus really helps with that. Lilith at this point in time, while she makes this conversation with Uranus, is going to be ruled by Mercury in the sign of Cancer. So we're looking at creating objectivity around how we have gathered knowledge around our emotional dynamics and how we need to express ourselves in a healthy manner and to have healthy self-talk and to be able to trust one's own inner voice because this helps to create healthy habits. That means to jettison the inner voice that says that you can't or you shouldn't or that is the inner critic in a way that is paralytic to you and what it is that you're trying to do at this point in time. And this trine is in a last quarter trine. Um, sorry, it's in a, dis a disseminating trine and it speaks to Being able to, I'm thinking this over, it's in a first quarter trine. I'm so sorry. It's in a first quarter trine. And this speaks to being able 
to easily make these habits that are necessary. And it speaks to also an ease of understanding and coming into an awareness of what creates unhealthy habits or that needs to be purged or purified. This is also looking at exhausting habitual emotional dynamics that it's just like, ugh, you know, and the only way we can do that is through being objective about our emotional dynamics. And through that, we create an awareness that helps us to jettison this. So this is really this whole Lilith trying your honest conversation. And it's very beneficial because it says that if you take these steps necessary, that they can last the, the long haul, that there's an ease of integration about doing this. There's also an ease of wanting to be lazy about doing this. And for those that tend to procrastinate or put things off because of the inner critic or inner voice in their head, this symbolizes that at some period in time, if you don't hop on the train of working with this energy of cultivating healthier habits and coming to an awareness about negative inner self-talk, at some point a crisis can ensue to create the adjustment that is necessary. But we don't want to get there. We want to we want to do this now uh, because we have a choice. And it is about a choice seeing as Mercury and the sign of cancer is a part of this conversation because it's the ruler of Virgo of a Virgo Lilith. So with Uranus being ruled by Venus and Leo at that point in time as this conversation is going on, there is some type of creative actualization that can take shape whenever we're willing to put one foot in front of the other and to cultivate habits. There's something sacred and something spiritual about creatively actualizing through healthy habits. Because what this does is it really helps us merge the masculine and the feminine within, which is a Leo component. And within the masculine and the feminine, and within the Leo archetype, there is the nurturing of something that is worth nurturing that's about our self-dignity, Leo. And then there's a the thrust which is the masculine of putting it out there in the day-to-day, -day, the here and the now, instead of keeping it within. And so this is, it, it's just a beautiful conversation, I think. And I'm so happy that we're going to have it a few more times because it gives us, in true Virgo fashion, multiple times to exhaust what needs to be done exhausted and purged and purified from within and also to cultivate these healthy habits steps that it takes to creatively actualize or self-actualize in a way that is to the betterment of your relationship to yourself so it's really helping us cultivate even healthier values how one values oneself is it in self-dignity is it in harmony and balance is it critical? Is it, you know, it's looking at the juxtaposition of the negative and the positive and jettisoning out what isn't doing us any good and really creating and cultivating something that can last the and stand the long haul. Then on the ninth, Mars is going to in conjunct Pluto and Mars is going to be conjunct uh, Pallas Athene. And Pallas Athene has this Uranian vibe. It's where we can have like downloads of information or a come to an awareness out of nowhere. It's like this big windfall of an aha moment that can happen. And Mars and Pallas are in the sign of Leo. So whatever this awareness is that's wanting to be integrated into our desire nature, Mars, it's something that can help us to self-actualize. And with the in conjunct to Pluto and the sign of Capricorn, there is a refinement that is taking shape around our structural reality through the self-actualization process that's wanting to shape shape. This is also looking at and having an awareness that can be bestowed upon us around our dynamics that stem from our early childhood conditioning, 
that can actually what once was our poison is now our potion and can help us to self-actualize or to creatively actualize. And it helps us to refine and to readjust and come back into harmony and balance through no longer feeling the judgment in the same way that we might have stemming from prior relational dynamics that are from our early childhood development or from work or from religion or culture or society at large. And now it brings forth this creative spark because we come into this awareness about what this is meaning for us at this moment in time. It's also Pluto is retrograde. So there's something that we're reviewing and revisiting with this dynamic that maybe we had felt judgment or shame or guilt about in the past. And now we're coming into an awareness to where we can take responsibility for our own emotional dynamics instead of feeling held hostage to projections from the past. And so it that's that aha moment that can come. And then it helps us to act on the desires to self-actualize in some type of way that helps us with the sun being the ruler of Pallas and Mars and the sign of Leo and the sun is in the sign of Cancer, it helps us to create a more stabilization on the interior, on our emotional level, understanding what it means to be emotionally secure without the voices of others anymore. And then on the 10th, Mars is going to enter the sign of Virgo. And Mars in the sign of Virgo is definitely, whereas Mars is what our desires are that are emanating from our soul, transiting Mars works in tandem with our own natal, in our own natal chart. All you have to do is look at where transiting Mars falls in your own natal chart and see what it's aspecting because that will give you an understanding of what it is that your soul is desiring to work on at this point in time. And with Mars and Virgo, Virgo is about self-improvement and self-refinement. It's about purging and purifying what is no longer helping us to evolve. It's these habitual, emotional, relational dynamics and patterns that where we can feel stuck in this karmic loop. And with Mars in the sign of Virgo, it is wanting us to purge and purify this out of our system. This is also looking at if there is something that you have been wanting to do and you've been dreaming about it and wanting to self-actualize, this is the time now that you can put that into motion. You can feel like you can really put it into motion with Mars and the sign of Virgo. And through Mars transit through Virgo, the action that we take creates a reaction. And from that reaction, we get info where we get to contrast and compare. And we learn from our mistakes or from what does work. And then that helps with cultivating habits that are centered around what it is that we're wanting to put out there into the world right now, especially if you're someone where you're having a lot of work-related things surface. This is also a time where we are wanting to continue this cultivation of healthy habits. Virgo, it's leading back to this Lilith and Virgo of what is your soul? What are you? It amounts to desire, Mars. What are you desiring to do? And whatever it is, make a list in a Virgo-like way of what it is that you're wanting to do and to check the box each time that you hit that milestone because Virgo really likes that. And to remember that, again, I said this at the at earlier on in this video when I was talking about Lilith and Virgo, like the value is in the effort. Perfection is an illusion. Mars and Virgo learns through our mistakes. It's this juxtaposition of Aries energy, Mars, and Virgo, which can be extremely analytical and 
has a laser like focus as a way to bring discernment through understanding what is working and what isn't working. And it's important to remember that for most people, it takes 21 days to create a habit. So if there is something that you have been wanting to not do anymore, maybe you're a nail biter, maybe you want to eat healthier, maybe you want to quit smoking, maybe you want to start walking every day, or a perfect one for Virgo is maybe you want to start a meditation practice on a personal level. This is the time to do that. Mars and Virgo helps to create these healthy habits that really cultivate a healthier relationship to self. And there's a spiritual quality about this. If you're someone who's wanting to create healthier habits revolving around your spiritual relationship, which for some looking at this astrology is definitely wanting to take place, this is the time where this can really be cultivated in a healthy way. This is also a time where things can be jettisoned from our structural reality. Again, I'm going back to we're in a post-shadow period of this full moon that is wanting to culminate so that new structures can take place. And what better way to do that than to have Mars and Virgo to help us create the healthy habits that are needed in order to create that foundation we're standing upon. This can also be a time through this transit with Mars and Virgo where we are looking at shame. And that can be popping up for some people. And I probably am going to say this every time that we go through a Mars and Virgo transit every year to ask oneself when shame is creeping up, is this conditioned or is this natural? Is this something I should really be feeling shame about? Because shame can keep us stuck in habitual, relational, and emotional dynamics that are really unhealthy, that become paralytic, where we feel like we can't move. And Virgo is a mutable energy. And so just taking the necessary action creates an energetic flow to continue on doing what it is that we are needing to do right now on a very personal level. On the 10th also, sorry, my allergies are going crazy, guys. On the 10th, Mercury and the sign of Cancer is going to be at 29 degrees and opposing Pluto and Capricorn at 29 degrees. And this happens a few hours before Mercury moves into the sign of Leo right after midnight central time on the 11th. Mercury and the sign of Cancer opposing Pluto just that conversation, an opposition is about throwing something off that has created an imbalance. 29 degrees, or what we call in astrology an anoretic degree, is has a Piscean feel, so it's a culmination. Mercury is about how we have defined or classified information and how that's affected our structural reality. Mercury and the sign of cancer can be looking at the need, especially in this opposition, to throw off the ways in which we have learned how to express mercury express our emotional dynamics and where something has come to a head that is creating an imbalance and a need to learn how to have healthier ways to communicate what it is that we're needing to communicate on an emotional level for some with this opposition seeing as it's pluto in the sign of capricorn Emotional dynamics can really surface where we didn't know that they were suppressed or repressed, or emotional dynamics can surface where we are starting to understand how 
the ways in which we felt oppressed by others have affected the way in which we express our emotional reality. And there is a need to stop and to pause and to reflect on what this means for each one of us on a personal level if this particular conversation affects you. And to really make a choice as to how to self-express in a more natural and holistic way as opposed to a suppressive way. When we suppress, it distorts things. It's like that beach ball you hold under the water and you can only hold it on under for so long because you're suppressing it and the pressure of the water eventually comes up underneath it and shoots it out. And guess what? If we're expressing ourselves and this is happening, you might hit someone in the face with your words. <laughs> or on the other end, you could be seeing as Mercury is in the sign of Cancer. We can be extremely sensitive to others' words that actually help us get in touch with where we felt oppressed or, or we felt like we've had to suppress or repress our emotional dynamics. And so we can come into this awareness as a way to throw off the imbalances that this is creating for us. The moon is going to be in a T-square with Mercury and Pluto as this is occurring. And the moon is going to be in the sign of Aries. And so there can be a need to be one's own warrior, to take self-leadership in one's own life around emotional dynamics and the need and the freedom to express them in an independent way. This conversation can also get us in touch with where we felt like we couldn't be our own natural authority in our life because of something that happened early on where it was suppressive and that helps us get in touch with how we learned to express our emotional dynamics and with the moon and a t-square to this there's a need to take natural leadership and authority and responsibility and authority over our own emotional dynamics and to relearn how to express these on a natural level That moon is going to be ruled by Mars and Virgo at this time. And so the refinement and self-improvement can really take shape whenever we have the curiosity to explore what this is meaning in our life. And it has the propensity to create different structures, Pluto Capricorn, in our life. This is also a conversation where we're looking at Pluto's being ruled by Saturn and Pisces. This can be where we are coming into an awareness about how man-made constructs of how we have been conditioned to go about expressing our emotional dynamics, there can be aha moments. This can also be a conversation where for some, within the Capricorn archetype, there can be post-delayed traumatic or like post-traumatic um delayed post-traumatic stress that happens. And so there can be a awareness that comes up around where some traumatic event occurred in our life that now we are getting to experience the emotional dynamics as a way to throw off the not necessarily the trauma, but the suppression of the emotional dynamics that occurred from the traumatic experience and to get curious about how this has affected us on a personal level. And that really helps us to be an authority of our own lives instead of feeling oppressed by a traumatic event. And it gets us in touch with not only our emotional dynamics, but also um, our inner warrior and champion to move past the things that we struggle with in life. And so there's a refinement 
on a self level that helps us to readjust and helps us to reconnect with our emotional reality in a brand new way that serves as a healing function within our relationship to ourselves. And then on the 11th, Mercury is going to enter the sign of Leo, where we will get to learn more about what it means to self-actualize by going after what it is that our heart is desiring and to learn about this in a brand new way. And I will be talking more about Mercury in the sign of Leo next week. But on the 11th, the sun in Cancer, which is the ruler of that Mercury, is going to square Chiron in the sign of Aries. And Chiron's ruler is that Mars and Virgo. And so this really speaks to continuing to change our awareness around where we feel wounded and to purge and purify the dynamics that have perpetuated that stem from our core woundings. And through doing so, we get to integrate and actualize new ways of emotionally understanding ourselves on a much deeper level. And so there can be instances this week that come up where we are reminded of something that has created a wound within us. And there is a need to have discernment around how this has affected us and what we can do to exhaust the emotional dynamics that are linked to this core wounding that are really perpetuating more wounding in our life and that perpetuate insecurity within. So there's a lot of looking at what feels secure to us and what feels insecure and how to cultivate deeper levels of inner emotional security through having the courage to look at core wounding dynamics as they surface. Because this is a week where that which has been repressed is going to surface. We are on the heels of that Capricorn full moon. This stuff is wanting to culminate so we can start a brand new cycle of emotional awareness, emotional intelligence, and to creatively actualize and self-actualize through the awareness that we gain through having the courage to dive into our emotions, to get curious about where we feel hurt, where we felt wounded, where we feel guilt, shame, judgment, repressant repression, suppression, or have felt oppressed. And so to consciously utilize all of this energy this week really helps us to create healthier habits and helps to jettison unnatural guilt, shame, and judgment that have created distortions within our emotional dynamics. And so this all serves to realign and readjust and refine and self-improve this week on the heels of that Capricorn full moon and it helps us to to culminate this these old structures of how we've emotionally identified or what constitutes our inner security and with the Leo energy and the sun being in cancer we get to creatively actualize and self-actualize through these emotional dynamics through integrating new awareness around our emotional dynamics that is the sun being the rule sun and cancer being the ruler of this leo energy that's happening in tandem with our capricorn cancer dynamics sprinkled in with a little bit of virgo so i hope this is beneficial to you guys i will be talking about this new moon coming up next week this is the week to do this inner work. So that way, whenever this new moon happens and the nodes switch, we can hit the ground running. 
we feel like we're prepared to start a brand new cycle revolving around our emotional security and what it means to have a healthy relationship to ourselves that then gets to be projected out into the world. This is a week to really look at what your projections are. Are you getting your needs met by others? Are you projecting your needs onto others? Because with the Virgo energy and series in conjunct Saturn that's going on this week, there is a need to really look at, are you able to meet your own needs? Have you been conditioned to not meet your own needs? Have you been conditioned to give, 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 and have nothing left for yourself? These are all of the dynamics that can be coming up for some work dynamics are going to be coming up. Are you getting your security by how you are productive in life revolving around your work? What does that mean for you? Does that mean that you're really valuing yourself on an interpersonal, emotional level? Or are you getting your value just from what you can do? All of this can be coming up as a way to self-improve and to refine. And ultimately, the work that each one of us does on an individual level helps the collective. And so this is a time to really do this inner work and help to wrap up this whole cycle that has been shown to us through the Capricorn full moon that just happened. Be kind to yourselves this week. Be courageous in the exploration of your emotional dynamics and know that when you have a pure intention to self-discover and to be a participant in your evolutionary journey, that what you need will be given to you. It may not be what you want, but you will be given exactly what you need in order to further your growth, your evolutionary growth. And we are humans who have emotional experiences. And so many of us have been taught to repress these emotional dynamics. Pluto retrograde in the sign of Capricorn is getting us all in touch with where we have repressed these emotional dynamics. And this week is sure to set off some fireworks within for those of us who have been holding that beach ball of our emotions underwater for far too long. And it really is a blessing. So if things come up and they feel like crisis or they come out of nowhere, just know that we aren't here to suffer. It's not because you're supposed to suffer. You're supposed to walk through this. You are supposed to be the warrior of your life who champions for your own emotional intelligence and personal evolutionary growth. And this week is a week that can do just that. Before I go, I'm going to be saying this for a very long time until this happens, but I am doing a talk on the asteroid Lilith and her nodes with the beautiful soul and fellow astrologer Helena Garcia, who is based in Portugal. We are doing this talk at the Evolutionary Astrology Conference well, the Jeffrey Wolf Green Evolutionary Astrology Conference happening October 6th through the 8th. It is an online conference. I would love to see you there. If you can't come on those days, you can still register and you will get all of the recordings. If you don't want to pay for the whole thing and you just want to see my talk or someone else's talk, you can pay for just that talk. If you go on to the website which I'm going to post the link in the description of this video. It's jwgaea.org. You can register and get 10% off if you use the coupon code PLUTO, which is all caps. And I hope to see you guys there. I love connecting with each one of you. I love being a part of your journey. I love the work that I do. I love being of help to others. I love when you guys write in to me and just tell me about, you know, how you're correlating something within the astrology to your own emotional dynamics. I just love connecting with everyone and I love the people who come see me as clients. 
I get just as much out of helping you as you do out of me helping you. I think I said that a little backwards, but you get it. Anyway, I hope you all have a beautiful week. Be gentle, be kind with yourself, and know that we are in a time period of self-improvement and that you've got this. You've totally got this. Keep going.